we are pulling in Gary's. As you can see, this is, let me zoom in, here you go. We know we got at Gary's place. We'll see you in a bit. Hello and welcome again on the Vintage Aviation News YouTube channel and we are in Rockersville, Virginia today, southwest of Washington DC, visiting a good friend of mine, the one and only Gary Velasco. In fact, here is his trailer back here. The shop is right across and uh, it's kind of like impromptu visit. I wasn't planning really to be here, but work took me up to Washington, so I called Gary and and we realized I've never been to his shop. Um, he's been on the channel before, he's been on Vintage Aviation News, multiple articles, and, but I've never seen the shop. So I'm excited actually to be here because I wanna see how he does, uh, he does his uh, masterpieces. So uh, stay tuned before I go. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and put a little like, it really help us uh, with the algorithm and just be up there in uh, YouTube, uh, YouTube listing of videos. So if you don't mind, just put a little like and activate the bell. So every time we publish a new video, we'll, uh, you'll be notified. So again, thanks for watching and let's go talk to Gary. See ya. All right, here I am, Fighting Colors, uh, at the home of Gary Velasco. This is the shop. We just went to uh, Gary's house and uh, he told us to meet us here. So. Let's see if Gary's here. Hard rock music, the way we like it. All right. And here he is, the one and only Gary Velasco. Gary, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good. Nice well, to see you. Just to see, uh, great to see you as well. We've been chatting uh, last few days and uh, uh, we realized that uh, you've been on the channel before many times, but I've never been to the shop. So I say, why don't we do a nice video around the shop and uh, you show us around, show how you do, you do your work and your, uh, your masterpieces and okay. uh, you will not reveal the secrets of the trade, but uh, you can show us around a little bit because sure. uh, I've seen pictures on Facebook, the shop, it's actually pretty cool, so. Well, there's a lot of chaos here, as you can see, we're, we're uh, doing a lot of different things, we're transitioning right now, scaling things down, obviously due to, you know, my health uh, situation, so, uh, we're selling some things off and um, we're moving stuff around and we're getting things from like decades old, like some of these files, <laughs> cleaning out some of the, the cabinets. So, um, um, so yeah, it, it's quite messy. Some of the walls, you know, the, the artwork is starting to go down and we're placing with other things that are in storage. So uh, it, it's a constant transition now to who knows, you know, yeah. what we will be in the next few months or so. In the meantime, yeah, this is the office. This is where most of the, you know, the clerical nonsense happens. Um, some of the research, you know, between the, you know, all the computers here, they all have different functions. There's some of the creative stuff, some of the um, uh, research stuff, and then some of the, just the fun stuff. But, um, you know, I have my own little personal library there. Um, a lot of different tchotchkes, you know, in, in the, uh, on the shelves, um, little trophies, as I like to call them, things that I've been involved in in the past that I put up, you know, um, beer cans, other projects that, you know, like Barnes and Noble, and, uh, the styrofoam models and, and right. things that, you know, if you're on Facebook, you would you have see. seen. I've been well, on, that's, that's, on, a, that's exactly why I've seen, yeah. I've seen your shop on Facebook and never in person right. so well there, i'm very active yeah. there and i post a lot of things of what's going on here at the shop on the facebook pages that we uh, uh administer so yeah all right let's go around let me uh, this is you know when you walk in this is pretty much what you see small foyer uh it was set up a little bit nicer before there were more things on the walls but as i said before um the artwork's starting to uh, be sold off uh, my personal stuff one-offs uh prototypes that kind of thing i have um a bunch of uh, an eclectic, uh, you know, um, bunch of stuff, I guess, you know, just the museum worthy uh, materials, a couple of ejection seats, some practice bombs, um, B-26 propeller. I, again, a lot of this just has to go, unfortunately. Uh, One-off artwork that's here on the walls. Yep. That's, you know, that could be found on eBay right now. Uh, we have some of our leather jackets that we have are for sale on our own brand. Um, our shirts. This is one of the Flying Tiger shirts. That's actually a prototype that was a sample that was approved. Uh, that's now out in, in uh, retail. Um, and then we just move on um, to other one-off stuff. I mean, there's panels. Every nook and cranny of the shop, there's always something. Um, again, buried in that sort of uh, uh, conclave is, is a little display of, of museum quality 
uh, interesting artifacts, you know, that deal with nose art to some degree. But uh, my own personal collection, some interesting things. Uh, F8 panels, C130 panels. I think there's a couple of Mustang pieces back there, P61 piece. F84 piece hanging up there. Uh, and then we have, uh, again, some, some more memorabilia, you know, Corsair panel. Uh, ammunition, an ammunition chute that actually is full. I mean, of course, it's not live ordnance, but, you know, mind you, 50 caliber. Uh, and then we work our way into the sort of uh, little uh, hallway here where I have uh, more stuff, artwork on the walls, on the floor, another display case full of things. Uh, what was left of my musical year. Um, yeah, now let's talk about that for a second okay. because a lot of people know you as a knows our artist and historian. Right. But there was a Getty Velasco before. Yeah, there was, uh, was. Yeah, I had a 40-year uh, musical career playing in in, in bands and, and more notably uh, Pin Siren, uh, which I had an album out on, on an independent label, and uh, this was part of my guitar rig. Uh, and I started selling off some of the amps. There's a one of one of the last Marshalls. There's a Mesa Boogie below that, and uh, you know, again, a lot of this gear has to go. I have a full PA next door at the shop that has to be sold off. Um, there's a recording 16 track machine behind you, Mo, over there. And, and, and it's just, like I said, every nook and cranny, there, there's stuff everywhere. Um, but in the meantime, um, uh, we'll continue on. Uh, you know, we still have, of course, we have to have music. Hey, Don. Hey. That's Don. That's Rockhead yep. from Wingnut Rockhead. That's Rockhead. right. Um, we have a bunch of Harrier panels. Um, and this just happened over the last, uh, of the holidays. Yeah. Um, some 40 four pieces, you know, orders that would got done just based on one thing that I had lying around. I put it on eBay and I set it up on the AV8 Harrier Legacy site and everybody was asking about it. Can you make more? And I'm like, well, if I get enough orders and sure enough, the floodgates open and, you know, here we are. They're all over the place taking awesome. over at the moment, but uh, they'll be all done in the next couple of weeks uh, oh, nice. for those that uh, are looking uh, to get their orders in. And then, um, I mean, we're going backwards sort of in a way, but those are some drying racks back there. These are some of the finishing racks where we finish off some of the panels. Um, as you can see, there's some to your left here. Um, there's a Liberty Bell being done now. There's there's a several. Can we show that one or it's. Uh, you you okay. can show that, yeah. Right. I mean, there's, there's no. We'll, do, we'll do a little B roll here. About but, that, yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, and there's leather jackets, A2s that are yeah. in, in various states uh, being done as well. Um, it's, it's, it's projects everywhere. I mean, a lot of people that go, yeah, I mean, you think I do this in one at a time. I, I don't, you know, there's at least a dozen, 15 orders or so at any given moment that's constantly being rotated. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah, thankfully I have patient customers because, um, these things take time. You know, I don't do them. Why don't you one... talk? Why don't you talk uh, now that we are in the shop? You can show some of the tools of the job. So why okay. don't we talk about how these right. panels come right. to uh, well, we, reality? We basically start here, um, where I have the raw material. Um, some of the panels are over there. You know, we rivet them um, over here. Uh, this is basically the table. Again, everything is a mess. Where well, we do. Um, some of the panels here, we bang them together. Um, and uh, from here, they go to the spray booth, um, down further here, and um, they get base coated, uh, primed, then base coated, sorry. Um, and then they go into the drying racks and to the finishing tables, to the shipping table, and then right back out the door. So we're basically making a big loop yes. around here. And, um, and these are some of the Panels those out. Are the panels. Yeah, yeah, that's the how they get delivered, right? No, yeah, no, they have to get uh, put in. You know, well, they're basically flat. We have to okay. put the holes in, countersink them, put the rivets in. Um, you know, they're cleaned up with acetone. Uh, and then they go into uh, the spray booth to get spray booth. Yep. primed. Awesome. Uh, and then, uh, you know, as you see right. here, then they get put out here, uh, painted with the artwork and/or decals if necessary. But in these cases, these are the painted versions. Um, and they go just right around, big circle, onto that last table where they get uh, packaged and shipped back. All right. So that's the process. All right. So this piece behind me is an L39 tail. Interesting story behind it. I'm trying to, I want to explain it to you, but 
short version. Uh, I acquired this tail while um, working with the Warrior flight team and um, the engine caught fire. We had to replace the tail and, and in doing so I had to repaint it. And again, when it's a new payment, um, it was easier for me to, you know, to say, okay, well, I'll take the tail uh, in lieu of payment and this is how I got that. So this was the, uh, the first painted version of the tail that we did. Uh, of the uh, L39 uh, known as uh, Vandy One. And that's still flying and active today, um, based out of the DC area. So um, the rudder is right here on the floor. So there is a rudder for this. Yeah, it's right here you go. Yep, and uh, so again, you know, the fire sale, everything must go. Um, so this tail is also for sale. It could be found on eBay as well as a lot of other things that are on the walls here. And if not, they will be listed. So they can go on uh, eBay under uh, Fighting Colors under, or Getty Velasco? Um, uh, yeah, Fighting Colors. Fine. Okay, we'll good. find it. We'll put it right below. And yeah. then FightingColors.com, which is the website. It's the website. Okay, right. perfect. Yeah, uh -huh. so we'll, we'll put that. So the fire sales is on there on eBay. Cool. Right. And um, you'll find some interesting things. Yeah. And I'm going to be listing more, th yeah. more stuff over the, uh, the weeks and months. Yeah, okay. okay. I, I, uh, we've been talking about bunch of different things we did not talk about jackets because you also do that right yes okay um yeah i'm still about... working on yeah this is devil dog that I'm, I'm you know it's in in progress this will not have a whole lot left to go that's sort of slip down i got you okay and um and then after that uh, this one i'm working on uh, the back piece is uh you, you've seen that that's on facebook it's got a really nice pinup called uh, lady luck and uh, I'm working on doing the uh, Eighth Air Force insignia on there, so we've got several more layers uh, and detailing to do for this. Um, unfortunately, this happens to fall on a seam, so it's not very easy. Easy, yeah, I can uh, see that. To work around it, but uh, it, do you use different paint for the jackets? Yes, yeah, uh, I'm using this. This is called Angelus. This is a very really good brand of, of acrylic paint that i use for all my leather jackets hey maybe we should stop right here because we are giving away a bunch of secrets here right well no, <laughs> no, not really. no i'm I kidding mean, any professional um, um artist that works on leather jackets well no and at uh, a2 jackets um uses this particular paint i mean there are other brands but this is the one that's widely used much like one shot is widely used uh, for for, uh, uh, for sign paint gotcha. this is widely used for leather um, but uh, yeah, as you can see here, the, the table's littered with projects on top of projects, but uh, some of the AV-8 Harrier stuff, these are the details that I had made up in the, to scale. I had to redraw a lot of the artwork because a lot of the uh, artwork that you find online is very generic. Sure. So I had to take it and refine it so it looks more like the ones that were really on the airplane. Or gotcha. The text on the, on the area. So a lot awesome. of it had to be redone, rescaled up, so we would fit on these uh, panels. Uh, and those are full-size 7L panels, by the way. All right. All right. In this case, uh, we're working on a, a B24 um, custom piece. Um, it's, it's very basic, not a whole lot going on with the artwork, but the artwork, uh, we started out just obviously putting the panel together. Um, you know, had a blue stripe on the nose, and that, that's represented here. Uh, we make uh, custom templates uh, in case we have to do it again. So we retain all that artwork, uh, takes out a lot of the guesswork. And this is one of the templates that we put out for this goofy looking squirrel here, hence the term of squirrel cage. Um, and then we're gonna paint this up. Uh, we'll add secondary elements like um, uh, natural insignia and any other markings this particular B29 may have had. Uh, we'll polish this panel up a little bit, clean it up, curve it a little bit, and then uh, it'll be shipped out to the customer. Okay. So this is this particular uh, piece. So you produce these stencils essentially to allow it to be a little faster, quicker, accurate. Yeah, it, it's more accurate. accurate. It takes a guesswork out and we have to do it again. Yeah. Which in a lot of cases we do. Um, we'll have the artwork already done and all we have to do is just, you know, place it on the panel. Um, so this way it's consistent with the same okay. one. It takes a lot of the guesswork out. Um, and it, it's just more efficient in that way to do the stenciling and tell me uh, something about the painting I see I mean the, the brand here is there any specific reason why you use one brand versus another one um, there are two companies that uh, that produce a, a sign painters paint because it's designed it's, a, it's an enamel oil based enamel so it's meant to be <clears throat> used for outdoor use so it, it's, it's a thicker paint it's very opaque uh, except for yellows, you know, which requires sometimes two coats 
but uh, the paint will last. Um, it, it, it's, it's unlike acrylics, which fade quickly. Um, this paint will, will last for years, um, especially if it's indoors, it'll last for even decades, you gotcha. know, out in the sun. But it's, it's a very high quality paint. Um, it's primarily used in the sign painting industry. Uh, it's used for uh, hot rods, you know, pinstriping, okay, okay. motorcycles. I was, uh, I was looking at the labeling. It, it kind of does look like a little vintage looking can of paint. Well, I'm wondering if it's done on purpose. No, is that a reason behind it? Well, the company's been around for over 100 okay, years. Okay, here you go. Perfect. So, I, it yes, kind of you know, confirms my... This company, One Shot's been around, uh, uh, you know, the uh, turn of the century, 19th century. Um, or the 20th century, I should say, excuse me. And uh, as well as another company called Ronin Paints, which is a competitor. But I prefer one shot uh, just because it's a lot more uh, accessible to getting the paint. Not something you go to your uh, uh, art store yeah, and get off the shelf, unless it, yeah. it's a pretty big art store like Blick. Um, you know, they'll carry the paint. Uh, but for the most part, you can get them online, um, either directly through the company or some gotcha. outlets that do cater to the sign, you know, painters industry. Um, one thing that I would like to uh, discuss is that, as you well know, <laughs> social media, it can be funny sometimes, right? You, somebody posts a photo, or, and they say, oh, this is red, yellow, blue, whatever it might be, without having really, a, I guess, a firm knowledge of the actual uh, uh, color. Mm -hmm. on a black and white pictures for obvious reasons it's black and white right mm -hmm. but you develop your own uh, i guess expertise on how to be able to recognize colors even on black and white photos right yeah and, and it's important to know that there were two film types that were available at the time panchromatic and orthochromatic and they render um, shades of gray <coughs> and colors differently on a positive film print basically your, your, your film, um, your positive print that, that you get any photograph. So um, orthochromatic will render uh, <coughs> reds um, very, very um, dark, almost black. And it's a common mistake if you not, don't know the two film types and you don't know which one you have in your hand and you see that color is almost black, most people interpret that, okay, that was black, when in fact it was most likely red. So, I mean, there are ways that you could take and scan that photo in and manipulate it and, and boost the mids and, and the highlights and the shadows and, and or invert the, uh, the black and white. So you can see um, in a forensic kind of way, it, it'd be like detective work, look more closely at the actual photograph and see things that you don't normally see with the naked eye when you're just looking at photographs you may see an outline. So what you thought was black and you see some another outline that's even blacker, well, that d dictates then the color you originally thought was black is a different color, okay? So again, when I said um, that the most common uh, answer to that would probably be red, especially when you're dealing with aluminum. Um, the primarily color that air crews knew and figured out that red would pop from aluminum as an example in this particular case, you could see how that red just pops right out of aluminum. If that were black, you wouldn't see it so much from a distance. And um, sign painters of the period were a dime a dozen like graphic artists are today. So they knew this back then. However, over time, things like that got lost because, you know, now the computer age, we don't know that. And there's less sign painters out there. But when it comes to, you know, identifying colors in black and white footage and research like I do to try to figure out when I do a project, okay, I have to know what colors, or at least my best guess in figuring out what the colors are. I have to do the research, find as many photographs of the subject as best as I could, and then determine what color type of film it is to determine the colors. Um, and of course, you could look at things within the photograph that's known colors, other things that made it in safety markings on, on the airplane that were painted red, or things, of, you know, things on a uniform, like a, uh, um, a life vest, you know it was yellow, right? So you have shades already within that photograph that you can correlate to be able to determine what those colors are and then go back from there. So um, it, it's a fair amount of research that one needs to be done to determine the colors in, as correct as could be. You know, I'm not perfect 100%, but I know enough 
to know what I'm looking oh, at. But there is a process behind your, I guess, uh, uh, explaining why. Sure. It's not just pull exactly. out of your rear end. Well, and that's will. why I collect <laughs> nose art photographs. Yep, I have yep. a very large, huge, vast um, collection of black and white nose art photographs. Yep. And, um, you know, in doing so, I mean, you could see the two film types of the airplanes, you know, because obviously there's more when people have a camera and the different film types and, you know, when they process it, you could see, I was like, wait a minute, that's not what I thought it was. Uh, and then, of course, I contacted Kodak to confirm, Okay. See? Um, you know, with their archival, you know, department and talk to, you know, the people there about these things. And, of course, there are books that you could look up and um, vintage books on, on, you know, black and white film that will also tell you these same answers that I'm giving you now. And again, it's not something off the, you know, at the top of my head, you know, that information is there. I'm just bringing it back again and, and into the realm of recreating nose art and not just taking just guess here and there, willy nilly. You know, Perfect. I'm trying to be accurate because I'm portraying something and I have a reputation of trying to be historically accurate as possible. Therefore, I have to be as accurate Makes sense. as possible. All right, tell us a little bit about uh, this Corsair Corner. I see Robert Conrad, you know, uh, yeah, yeah. start off Bob Bob like sheep. Yeah. Our readers, our readers do. Um, yeah, we did a reunion um, yeah. back in 1990, I want to say 98, at uh, Sikorsky Airport in Connecticut when I was still living there. And um, I was doing a, a, a panel signing with the uh, three members of the Black Sheep. Uh, one of them is, uh, was Boynton's wingman, Robert Clerg, and an ace. And uh, Henry Bourgeois and uh, Jim Hill uh, were the, uh, the signers of, of the uh, limited edition Corsair. Yeah, I see. Uh, you have Jim Hill. Yeah. Yep, yep. So out of, you know, by chance, I said, well, let me see if we can get Robert Conrad to go. And, and people were telling me, well, he's very private and he, would, he doesn't do interviews he doesn't do appearances and, and was, i said well let me let me leave a message with uh, his agent california so i did i sent him some material and i told him what i was looking to do and lo and behold like a week later i get a phone call phone rings and he goes gary there i said yeah this is gary hi bob conrad i'm like no it isn't he goes no really it's bob conrad and he goes, yeah, you said my uh, agent something. You know, that's my impression. Of yeah, yeah, no, it's good. Keep doing, keep anyway, doing it. It's actually so, good. <laughs> uh, yeah, he um, he called back, and it was him. And he goes, I'd be delighted. He says, you're doing this reunion of Black Sheep. He says, I'd be happy to do it. That's pretty and awesome. He, and he also reiterates, I don't do reunions. I don't get out there. But for this, I'm going to go. So we did that. So we turned it into this little publicity thing. And we went to an art gallery in Connecticut called the uh, Greenwich Workshop. We did a signing with him there. We went out to lunch, and, and you know, he did the uh, air show with us, and uh, it was him and his daughter that also came out as well, too. So, fun time. Great memories, you know, hanging with, with, with Robert Conrad. Who would have thought? As a kid, I'd be, you know, watching the TV show, and let alone meet the original Black Sheep, and then the actor who portrayed Patrick Boynton, Robert Conrad. That's pretty so awesome. That was, that was some, some... Well, our, our viewers have been reading Vintage Aviation News for a while know that our writer Chappie, or, or Stephen Chapis, is running a book about Bob Black like Sheep. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm going to try to put a link in here, so we'll... Uh, We'll try to uh, give Chapel Law exposure, but yeah, a book is coming out. So this is a cool story. And then you have uh, Gabranski right, right there, right? Yeah, yeah tell us a, that story. Well, we did a signing with him too. And it was at, actually at the same um, reunion. So we invited him and also Bob Morgan. So imagine that crew uh, all in one um, air show. Uh, and dinner dance. So, uh, these ah, you were like what, uh, 21 in here? <laughs> <laughs> I was probably mid 30s, yeah. I would say. So that was 98. So, I, I'm, you know, do the hey, math. The hair is still same length, no, right? It's actually yeah. longer there. Okay. Not, not quite as gray as it is here, but uh, yeah. Um, there were some fun times. I mean, there's, you know, around the corner, there's more photographs of, you know, people I've been involved in through my career in dealing with nose art and whatnot, getting back into the aviation thing. So it, it's, it's been very lucrative, made a lot of good friends. Um, and, you know, I sound like this is a goodbye, but... <laughs> no, come on. I'm going to put, gonna put this clip at the, uh, at the beginning, <laughs> right? The beginning. We'll, we'll edit it that way. <laughs> no, it's, 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 it's been fun, you know. Um, even when I look back, I walk past this, I don't know how many times a day, and then now we're talking about it, it's like, ah, oh, let's bring back memories. 
But, you know, uh, it was fun. It was great, you know, um, and I still hope to do more as I can, you know, um, God willing. So um, it, it's yeah. just, it's all good. It's all fun. And, and, you know, I was happy. It was a pleasure to work with people and let alone meet history, actual people that made history. Well, that's uh, certainly um, glad we got to know each other. We got mm-hmm. bumping into each other. And uh, uh, thanks for having me here. I know it's a short notice. I didn't plan this very well, but I promise I was going to come see you. And, ah, be and uh, there will be another time. So anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for having us here today, Gary. And uh, hopefully I'll get to see you here in uh, you know, my next trip. Okay, thank you. Do it again. All right, this wraps up the visit to Fighting Colors, Gary Velasco's shop. Thanks for watching, and it was a pleasure to be here. Again, um, sorry for the low quality and probably the audio not that great, but it was kind of like a last-minute thing. I don't have my gear and no microphones, nothing. I just wanted to come here and say hi to Gary, mainly. And then uh, we say, why don't we just shoot something? And so here you have it, raw as it is, and I hope you enjoy it anyway. Uh, As usual, uh, thanks for watching and please make sure to put a like on this video and subscribe to the channel and activate the bell so every time we go live you'll be notified and again thanks for watching. Bye-bye.